In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, we are entering into the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And also we combine the solemnity of the solemnity of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We know that Mary assumed into heaven. As we pray in this Eucharistic celebration, like Mary, we also live a life pleasing to God. Let us prepare ourselves in this Eucharistic celebration. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God's pardon and forgiveness. With one voice we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built a house. She has set up her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beasts and has mixed her wine. She has also set a table. She has sent out her maids to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who is without sense, she says. Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave simpleness and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. Fear the Lord, you holy ones. They lack nothing, those who fear him. The rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing. Come, children, and hear me, that I may teach you in the fear of the Lord. Who is it that desires life and who longs to see prosperous days? Guard your tongue from evil and your lips from seek, speaking deceit. Turn aside from evil and do good. Seek after peace and pursue it. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Look carefully, brethren, how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, always and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the Father ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Be Jesus Through the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, I'm sure most of you have seen the one of the great wonder, the Taj Mahal, which is placed in India, in India. The Taj Mahal has been described as a love song in marble, completed in 1645. The magnificent marble mausoleum was built by Shah Jahan, India's Mughal emperor, in memory of his favorite wife, Mumtaj Mahal, the chosen one of the palace. Her maiden's name was Princess Arjuman. Shah Jahan loved her deeply, calling her his Taj Mahal, meaning the Pearl of Palace. But Princess Mumtaj Mahal died giving birth to the 14th child and the emperor was consolable. So he summoned a great architect from Persia to build the Taj Mahal, telling him that it must be the one perfect memorial in the world. Seven years were needed to build this enhancing edify, edifice the gleaming white marble and bridal with the flashing jewels. It is an enduring monument to love that still inspires tourists, artists, and writers from all over the world. This beautiful love story gives us some idea of how much God must have loved Mary, the mother of Jesus. Today's feast of her assumption into heaven is proof of his by raising her from the dead and make and taking her into heaven body and soul god demonstrated his 
undying love for Mary. Like Shahajan, God could not bear the death of his beloved. However, God could do what no Indian emperor could do. Raise his beloved from the dead and restores her to life even more beautiful than before. Moreover, God didn't have to build a Taj Mahal to memorized, memorized Mary. Her glorified body is itself a magnificent temple of the Holy Spirit. The Feast of the Assumption is one of the most important feasts of Our Lady. Catholics believe in the Assumption of the Virgin Mary into heaven. We believe that when her earthly life was finished, Mary was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory, where the Lord exalted her as Queen of Heaven. Assumption is the feast of Mary's total liberation from death and decay. The consequence of original sin, it is also the remembrance of the day when the church gave official recognition to the centuries old belief of Christian about the assumption of the heavenly mother. In the Orthodox Church, the coemesis or dormiti, dormisio, which means falling asleep, of the Virgin begin, began to be commemorated on August 15th in the 6th century. The observance gladly, gradually spread the West where it became known as the Feast of Assumption. By the 30th century, the belief had been accepted by most Catholic theologian and it, it was a popular subject with a Renaissance and Baroque painters. It was on November 1st, 1950, that through the apostolic constitutions by Pope Pius, Pope Pius XII officially declared the assumption as a dogma of Catholic faith. On this important feast day, we try to answer two questions. The first question is, what is meant by assumption? And the second question is, why do we believe in Mary's assumption into heaven, despite, of, despite the fact that there is no reference to it in the Bible? Assumption means that after her death, Mary was taken into heaven, both body and soul as a reward for her sacrificial cooperation in the divine plan of salvation. On this feast day, let us thank the Lord for the gift of the mother, and let us pray to Mary to help us find the right path every day. Mary's assumption gives us the assurance and hope of our own resurrection an assumption into heaven on the day of our lost judgment. It is a sign to us that somebody through God's grace and our good life, we too will join the Blessed Mother in giving glory to God. It points the way for all followers of Christ who imitate Mary's fidelity and obedience to God's will. Since Mary's assumption was a reward for her saintly life, this feast reminds us that we too must be pure 
holy in body and soul. Since our bodies will be glorified on the day of our resurrection, St. Paul tells us that our bodies are the temple of God because the Holy Spirit dwells within us. He also reminds us that our bodies are members or the parts of the body of Christ. This feast also gives us the message of total liberation. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8 verses 34 that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And St. Paul reminds us in Galatians chapter 5 verses 1 that since Christ has set us free, we should be slave of sin no more. Thus, the assumption encourages us to work with God to be liberated from the bondage of evil. From impure, unjust, and uncharitable thoughts and habits, and from the bonds of jealousy, envy, and hatred. Finally, it is always an inspiring thought in our moments of temptations and despair to remember that we have a powerful Heavenly Mother, constantly interceding for us before her Son, Jesus, in heaven. The Feast of Mary's Assumption challenges us to imitate her self-sacrificing love, her indestructible faith, and her perfect obedience. Therefore, on on this feast day of our Heavenly Mother, let us offer ourselves on the altar and pray for her special care and loving protection in helping us lead a pure and holier life. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, dear brothers and sisters, let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, giver of life. Who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father, Son, and glorified. Even one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. The life of the world to come. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her would be fulfilled. Like Mary. Mary, mother of the church, guide and support Francis our Pope, all bishops, priests and deacons with her maternal love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the leaders of all...
lonely hear us. For the sick, the poor, and the lonely, may they draw strength, consolation, and healing by turning to Mary, who intercedes for us from a place in heaven. Lord, hear us. That all who mourn for their departed loved ones may take courage from this feast and find renewed hope in the promised resurrection. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all mothers, that they may find in Mary the example and strength to carry out their vocation. Lord, hear us. And in the silence of our heart, we pray silently our own needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Prayer for peace in Southern Africa. O God of justice and love, bless us, the people of Southern Africa, and help us to live in your peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, let me sow pardon. Where there is discord, let me sow harmony. Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, to receive sympathy as to give it. For it is in giving that we, we shall receive, in pardoning that we shall be pardoned, in forgetting ourselves that we shall find unending peace with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, by bringing Mary, body and soul to heavenly glory, you give us a renewed hope. We, may we never doubt that you will hear and answer our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal, for having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raise up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy is the Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself to braid and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son 
and filled with His Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May He make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Francis, Saint Clay, Saint Padre Pio, Saint Teresa, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen Breslin, our Bishop, Sylvester David, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you. At the passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Oh,